I thought I was done with standardized testing when I took my last AP test in my junior year of high school, but imagine the smile on my face when I figured out that I'd have to take the GREs as part of my graduate school application. For those of you who aren't familiar, a company called ETS administers the Graduate Record Examinations, or GREs for short. There's a general GRE, and then there are specific subject ones for whatever you're going to graduate school for. Unlike undergraduate admissions, however, graduate admissions seems to care relatively less about standardized test scores. In fact, most PhD programs in STEM fields have even gone so far as to completely drop their general GRE requirements, if not also their subject test requirements. Perhaps they've wisened up to the fact that these all-encompassing standardized tests are less a measure of your intelligence and more a matter of how many deer scat pieces of random information you can forcibly excrete onto a Scantron sheet. Now, with all that being said, even if schools don't explicitly ask for your GRE scores, they still allow you to submit your scores, so it can nonetheless be useful to your application if you do really well on these tests. Naturally, being a massive hypocrite and having not learned my lesson from three years ago, I decided that I would not only take the physics GRE, but also the general GRE. In my defense, I didn't know any of the stuff that I just told you back when I registered for the tests, having done as much due diligence as the crypto bros who threw their parents' mortgage at pee pee poo poo 69420 coin and asked surprise when they got rug pulled. Too soon? I don't think so. Either way, I had heard about these tests and the ETS website made it sound like they were relatively important, so I figured... I have some free time and I want to short my graduate school applications. What's the worst that can happen? I really have to stop saying stuff like that. At first, my test prep went relatively smoothly. I finished preparing for the quantitative section of the test in a matter of hours, given that none of the questions even required calculus, which kind of begged the question of how any of this was different from the SAT, and then moved on to the English section. Reading comprehension wasn't bad, but then I got into the vocab. Vituperate? Depilation? Raconteur? What the hell does intuity mean? Intuity fruity we trust? I don't think their froyo is that good. I eventually managed to compile a list of all of the words I didn't know, and it ended up being nearly 800 words long. I'm sure that some people somewhere use these words every day, but I'm also equally sure that everyone around them thinks of them as an insufferable encyclopedia vomiting forth the slew of random vowels and consonants. It's not that these words are useless in and of themselves, as having a large vocabulary isn't a bad thing. Maybe you just like collecting words. But the problem is that when the vast majority of the academic population, I'm speaking for STEM fields here, don't know these words, let alone the general public, these words lose their utility. Words are meant to communicate ideas between people, so when you use words that people can't reasonably be expected to know, you're doing a poor job of communicating your ideas. It has nothing to do with whether or not you can memorize these words, and everything with the fact that nobody else cares enough to use them regularly. In total, I prepared for maybe five days max for the general GRE, not counting the time I spent during my internship's lunch breaks doing vocab flashcards. I chosen to take the test online for the sake of convenience, so when test day rolled around, I just plopped myself in my gamer chair and logged in. ETS is pretty strict about what kind of stuff you can have in their room when you take the test, so I pretty much had to remove everything except for my bed and the computer. My second monitor? Gone. The broken TV that just sits on my nightstand? Gone. That one was probably for the better. The nightstand itself? Gone. My NBA Youngboy poster that sits at the back of the room and stares directly into the web conferencing camera with its unmoving eyes? I actually tried to keep that one in on test day, but the online proctor made me remove it. Just goes to show you that even the standardized testing industry wants to snub young boy. I couldn't even use regular paper for the GRE. I actually had to go out and buy a whiteboard so that they could see that I'd scrubbed off all of my notes at the end of the test. Well, the actual test itself was fairly uneventful. It took me four hours to complete, but it was your standard, well, standardized testing fair. The most interesting thing that happened was that a deer wandered into my backyard as I was taking the test and started to eat the tomatoes I'd planted. I started to shoo it away from the window, but the test proctor chimed in and told me that if I didn't get back into my seat immediately, I'd have my scores cancelled. I tried to explain what was going on, but she wasn't having any of it, so I dropped the topic. Eventually, I finished the test, and even though I didn't think it went particularly well, I was pretty happy with the way things turned out after so little prep. So, to celebrate, I went out with family, and I made sure to order an extra large plate of venison. Rip Bozo. 
Oh, but I'm not done. Not least because I didn't hit the 10 minute mark and need the mid roll ads to pay for being extorted. I mean, educated by my university. I had only just finished the general GRE, but what's significantly more important than the general GRE for physics PhD students is, you guessed it, the physics GRE. Although not required either by the majority of the programs I'm applying to, I've talked to the physics department chair at my university, and they said that during the admissions process, they only look at the physics GRE, even if you submit both tests. So the pressure was on now. I had three weeks after the general GRE to prepare for the physics one, but first was a matter of finding a testing location. I thought that I could just pop down to my local college or maybe a larger state university to take the test, but no. It turns out that there were no test centers within a hundred miles of me. In fact, I had to drive three states over to the nearest testing center. What's crazier is that I had a friend who lived in a large Midwestern city, and she said that there were no tests within 200 miles of her, and since she didn't have a car at the time, she just simply couldn't take the tests. I think it's pretty weird that a company who says their tests are a critical part of graduate school admissions operates so few testing centers that you have to cross multiple state lines to get to the closest one. But who knows, maybe they just hate their students. Just like College Board. Now, I have plenty of gripes about the way the physics GRE was structured, but they're more of the same of my issues with the general GRE. There was a bunch of random knowledge in there that you were expected to know that no self-respecting physicist wastes mental space memorizing. Getting into the details would require more physics knowledge, but the vocab examples I made from the general GRE are representative of how esoteric the physics fun facts I had to learn for the physics GRE were. It was a matter of learning every single branch of physics an inch deep, rather than having a clear understanding of any actual phenomena. Unfortunately for me, the three-hour length of the test was looking like more of an obstacle than the content itself. I'd herniated my disc a couple of months prior, and could only manage to sit for an hour at most without collapsing over in pain. Painkillers could extend that time by about maybe an hour, but I'd never tried to do anything more than that. I'd often get distracted by the pain during practice tests and had to lie down halfway through until my pain dissipated, which had the consequence that I'd often lose my focus. As such, my highest score before I took the actual test was only a 780 out of 1,000. Most of the graduate schools I wanted to go to had average scores between 960 and 1,000, so you could say that I was probably screwed going into the actual test. After a three-week sprint to prepare for the test, the day before test day finally arrived. I made the road trip to the correct state and checked into a hotel, given that the drive was too long for me to accomplish the morning of. Once I had gotten settled, by which I mean I'd opened my duffel bag and collapsed on the bed for an hour, I decided to get up and check out the testing site ahead of time. The GPS directed me through a pleasant suburban neighborhood, but then took a turn and headed past a correctional facility, took another turn, and went through an empty railroad depot, and finally ended up in front of a small church on the side of the railroad tracks. The surrounding area was so empty, I half expected there to be a boss battle when I walked up to the front door. Instead, I was greeted by a giant padlock and a piece of paper taped to the inside of the window that said I needed to go around back if I was there for the GRE. There, I found a shed, no bigger than a shipping container, and a sign that I would be taking the physics GRE in there. Now, by this point, I was worried that this was some sort of devious trap set up to catch unsuspecting students and rob them blind, but then I realized I already attend a private university. Laying it on thick today, aren't I? In spite of my concerns, I drove all over the surrounding area and couldn't find anything else that had the same address or any sort of marking saying that the GRE would be taking place there. So I went against everything I've learned in B-roll horror movies and decided to just show up the next day. Before I turned in for the night, I decided to walk around town for a bit to clear my head. Town might have been a bit of an overstatement given that there was a block and a half of shops and a Walmart. As I had nothing left to do that night, I went into the Walmart and started to browse around in the Hot Wheels section. I'm a big fan of the little die-cast cars because they allow me to own cars that I otherwise couldn't afford even after selling all of my internal organs. Eventually, I found a cool-looking one and decided to buy it as a good luck charm. I thought about eating at some of the restaurants, but after seeing the seafood cleanliness rating proudly displayed in the windows, I decided that I'd just go back to the hotel and eat the sandwich I packed. The next morning, I woke up around 6 a.m., after narfing down a bagel and popping a larger than normal amount of painkillers, don't do this, kids, I hopped in my car and went over to the test center. Almost immediately, I was met with bad fortune when I blindsided a random bird on my drive. I was only going 20 in this neighborhood, so the bird managed to fly off after getting smacked, but I was starting to get nervous. As I pulled into the testing center, I saw a mass of other cars parked on the grass and calmed down somewhat when I realized that I had indeed picked the right place. 
At the front of the shipment container, I was greeted by a kind old man. He assured me that I was in the right place, after which he led me into the testing center. The test itself was largely uneventful outside of the fact that I was so focused on the questions that I completely forgot about my back pain. I managed to answer all 100 questions twice over in the time allotted, and was generally feeling pretty good about the whole ordeal once I turned my test in. I got to talking with some of the other students in the tiny room, and I found out that in this random state half a country away from my university, there was another physics major from my school. He had graduated that spring, but having failed to get into graduate school, he was here to take the test again. I was initially worried about my own chances at graduate school until he started complaining about how he didn't have enough time to complete all the questions, to which I just stayed silent and nodded along. After saying goodbye to the kind old man who ran the center and thanking him and his wife for such a smooth operation, I went over to my car and laid down in the grass. I felt that I should have been more concerned about the outcome of the test, but my exhaustion from the last couple of weeks and from grinding out that three-hour test all caught up at me at the same time. All I could do was stare at the sky and wonder... What was I going to eat for lunch? A couple of months later, I got my scores back for both tests. I wasn't really concerned with my general GRE score since that was within my normal practice test range, but rather with my physics GRE score. Could I really have done much better than the mid-700s I was cranking out when I did practice tests? I hesitantly opened the document and opened my eyes to see that I had scored a 980 out of 1,000. In fact, I had only answered four questions incorrectly and was well within the range of scores that my intended graduate schools accepted. After my exuberance died down a bit, I realized that perhaps I wasn't the only one who was responsible for this good fortune. Maybe that Hot Wheels car really was something special.